Hi, I'm Ben Captiville. I'm founder and distiller at Captive Spirits in Seattle, Washington, where we make Big Gin. Um, Big Gin is a domestic craft alternative to your typical London dries from the UK. Um, and my partners and I, when we started the company, we felt like there was uh, definitely a, something missing from the craft category in the US, and that was a really rock solid London dry style gin. So for the first two years we were in business, we uh, this is all we made, um, and we felt that it was uh, it was well received because you know there were a lot of new Western gins being distilled at the time in the U.S. And I'm a big fan of uh, big flavors. Um, I, I like that traditional flavor. I love a big a, a nice juniper punch in the face, and so we wanted to distill something and offer that to to the public here. Um, so you don't always have to reach for a big brand to get that trustworthy flavor that you're looking for from a London dry style gin. Um, that being said, we also have some other uh, products that we finish in whiskey barrels. Um, bourbon barreled big gin is exactly that. It's big gin that's been finished in a bourbon barrel for six months. Uh, the barrels come from Heaven Hill Distillery. And we also have peat barreled big gin, which is uh, the same liquid as the London Dry and the bourbon barrel, but finished in a peat peated single malt whiskey barrel for, for four months. Um, you know, I have a lot of fun mixing with these gins. Of course, they're very near and dear to my heart. I've come from the restaurant industry, I worked from behind the bar for 12 years uh, before opening the distillery. And I was lucky enough to have a dad and a grandpa that were uh, moonshiners. And my dad, when I was in my mid twenties, he introduced me to the techniques of fermentation and home distillation. And it was a great opportunity for me to uh, start thinking about a career, uh, you know, after the bar. Um, so my best buddy, Todd Liebman and I, we started moonshining like crazy. Any, anything we could think of to make, we did. Um, and we decided on gin to open the business with because it's a spirit that you can make very high quality um, quickly with your signature on it. So big gin tastes the way it tastes because we make it taste that way. And so it's a, it's a very fun spirit to make from a distiller's perspective. It's really a, an expression of what we wanted to make. Um, and so we kind of, we had a vision of what we, what we wanted in the end and we were able to construct that through lots of research and experiments um, and drinking um, and cocktailing uh, to come up with this final liquid that it's very robust. Uh, the name Big Gin comes from, uh, we, we named it after my dad, Big Jim, but this is a Big Gin and when you try it, you can tell. And I think that's one of the reasons that the spirit works well in these barrel aging programs because it's very robust. Um, Big Gin is, uh, it's exactly that. So when we do finish it in the whiskey barrels, uh, there's still juniper flavor left, which is something that we are all about. And I think it's critical when you're selling something that says, you know, gin in giant letters along the front that there's some of that juniper flavor. So uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, look forward to sharing some more information. So one of the biggest struggles I've always had with being a buyer for a restaurant is um, finding spirits that work in my bar program. Uh, price has always been a factor for me, um, but there are a couple things that are even more important than the price tag. And that is, can I figure out a good story that I can tell uh, my guests when they're sitting in front of me to get them turned on to the brand? Because that is a great experience for them, and it's going to make me more money as a bartender and as a bar manager. Um, so is, um, if you wouldn't mind just kind of talking to us about your story, um, some of the things that may work for a bartender that's trying to sell Big Gin sure. or um, you know, incorporate higher-end spirits in their bar program. Mm -hmm. Well, when selling Big Gen, I know one of the stories that's easy to tell is that uh, uh, the distiller and founder of the company comes from a moonshining family, and I've also spent uh, quite a few days of my life behind the bar. Uh, and I do understand the struggle to try to in, uh, incorporate premium spirits into the bar program. Sure. Um, and I have a few ideas okay. that I'd like to share. Um, I think that uh, offering a, a twist on a classic, um, either uh, by switching the base sp spirit um, or... <clears throat> Maybe just elevating it with all the ingredients that are that are involved. Sure. Um, for example, with our uh, we we with with some barrel aged gins, uh, we make a drink called the peat, the green thumb. Green thumb. Uh, okay. Yep. Which which has quite a few premium spirits in it. Um, we have a peat barreled big gin. Okay. Uh, sh green chartreuse. Which is fairly expensive, as we all know, mm -hmm. and one of my favorites. We use uh, very high quality dry vermouths okay. like uh, Mancino or Ysagere. I think vermouth is a, is 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 a, a place that. Um, is important to spend a little money, right? You, you can, couldn't agree more. You, I couldn't agree more. You spend yeah. a little bit more, you get a lot better quality. Sure. Uh, and then uh, uh, the celery bitters mm -hmm. uh, for the green thumb, or perhaps uh, an old-fashioned with the barrel-aged gin. 
Nice. Yeah, and I, I like to keep it simple. I think the beautiful thing about the old-fashioned is it's basically any base spirit uh, with bitters and sugar. Right. Um, and my bartending career, I've made hundreds of old fashions with the smashed up orange, kind of like how they do it in Wisconsin. Um, <laughs> what's up, Wisconsin? I got a lot of family <laughs> and friends out there. Um, but, you know, we like to keep it clean and sexy. So, right. so instead of muddling up all the fruit in the glass, we'll kind of save that for garnish time. Uh, but, yeah, like, a, you know, a barrel-aged gin or perhaps a well-aged rum, uh, even a cognac, you know, all sorts sure. of different brandies um, can offer a, a twist on a classic with the old-fashioned. And I think the old-fashioned is a drink that, like, a lot of the people come into your bar will at least recognize the name. Sure. Um, and so that's an easy way for an upsell because instead of using your, your well bourbon or rye, um, offer a twist. And the twist being a barrel aged gin or, like I said, a, a well aged rum or something right. else that can kind of open the category. It, it allows your guests to kind of feel like they're, they're calling the shots a little bit. Right. Um, and you're there to suggest things. And I think that's one of the things that bartenders need to remember is that people look up to you. And they, and they want your suggestion because you are the professional. Right. Yeah, and it's it's another form of entertainment and engagement to your guests is being able to say, look, um, you, you should try this. It's very different, um, with especially with a barrel-aged gin. Um, you know, it's just a different kind of take on a classic, mm -hmm. which is something we all like to do. Um, and I know we talked a little bit about one of my favorite cocktails, um, the Alaska as yes. well. Yes, yes. And this is something that, once again, uses premium spirits. Um, but can be a really great conversation to have with a guest as well. Mm -hmm. So, and we're gonna go, you know, we're gonna go from the the green thumb where we use the green chartreuse to the Alaska cocktail where we use the yellow. Um, and we're gonna do two ounces barrel aged gin, uh, one ounce yellow chartreuse, couple dashes orange bitters, and that's a stirred cocktail sure. uh, that we like to garnish with a with an orange twist. Um, with big gin, we use a lot of bitter bitter orange peel during distillation, so I tend to use that. Uh, I, I love uh, orange as a garnish. Yeah, it kind of brings that really nice kind of creamy sweetness to it, mm -hmm. to the end of the cocktail that I love. Yes. Um, and and try to do that right in front of your guest. Oh, yeah. You know, because like the old uh, uh, cold medicines, you know, everyone loves the smell of a fresh orange. Yeah. And the oil is just, it's got a beautiful bright flavor. It's nice to garnish. And we were talking a little bit off camera earlier, um, and you mentioned something that you guys like to do. Uh, yes. Uh, with your gin mm -hmm. and that frozen, I've never heard about. The frozen martini. Right. Yeah, or our take on the frozen martini. So uh, my wife and I will take uh, uh, our favorite gins, um, and we'll drink it down to about, you know, we'll, we'll drink about a quarter of the bottle in gin tonics. And then we add our favorite uh, high-quality dry vermouths. And then it goes straight into the freezer. And so when martini time comes around, it comes around in a, in a second. Sure. Uh, we go home, we bust out our martini shells, we grab the, 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 the gin from the freezer, we pour it directly into the glass with no dilution. <laughs> right? So if you like you know, big, full-flavored uh, um, spirits like I do, um, it's a great option. And then we'll, we'll tend to garnish that with, a, uh, with a, 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 something salty like a caper berry. Oh, nice. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a couple of places I've seen, um, one in particular in San Francisco, that has a really great showcase for their martini program, and that is you walk in the door, and the place is beautiful, but it's got a giant chest of ice mm -hmm. sitting on the bar with all the different spirits that you can think of in there pre-chilled. So this could be a really cool adaptation of that program. Sure. Take it to the next level. Yeah, and a presentation of, of that is just, I mean, they sell more, probably more martinis than anybody else in the city mm -hmm. because you walk into the bar, you see this this amazing display of different spirits pre-chilled mm -hmm. and the quality is, is definitely there. So this could sure. be a really cool adaptation of that mm -hmm. uh, as well. I think people are kind of, yeah, they're, they're, they're moving away from I'll take a martini. They want their specific gin in that martini. Right. Uh, and there's a lot of different flavor profiles. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about the gin category too, is that um, there's a lot of different flavors and a yeah. lot of different type of types of martinis that can be made. Yeah. Um, not types of martinis, you know what I mean. Right. Just because it comes in a shell doesn't mean it's a martini. <laughs> but one of my, my favorite things to say, to tell guests, I remember this, was um, gin is what happens when vodka grows up. Yes. <laughs> so you got a lot more flavor going on. I like it. Um, and, and gin was the first flavored vodka. It, yeah, exactly. Oh, that's good. I, I never <laughs> thought about that one. Um, but as far as like premium spirits and premium gin and implementing them to the bar program, um, price is always going to be a struggle. But there's a lot of things that happen when you start to incorporate really high-end ingredients. 
um, the clientele is a little bit better. Um, you know, you get a little bit more tips. I mean, your check averages start to increase, mm -hmm. which means more money for you at the end of the day. And I think us as bartenders and bar managers, one of the responsible things that we have to do is balance that, right? What does that look like? And for me, when you have spirits like this that are a little bit more of a premium price, it is all about showcasing that and using the best ingredients. So um, a couple of ideas that we were talking about before is um, for for something like this is incorporating it into a bitter or tincture program sure. where you want to incorporate it back into the gin. Use gin as a base spirit. And you can put the name as far as a name recognition on the menu and showcase a local craft spirit mm -hmm. instead of you know a big brand or something like that. Um, one of the other things you could do is use um, this as a flavor base for vermouth. So if sure. you want to go into that vermouth, you know, a homemade vermouth um, program in your bar, which is a big undertaking, but using this as a base spirit for it, mm -hmm. um, even infusing uh, this gin with a bunch of other botanicals and then reincorporating it back into um, the gin with a, a martini or some other uh, cocktail that you can think of, um, that's that's a big win. Sure. Um, so you'd you can, use the big, you'd use the, the spirit to mm -hmm. increase the ABV of the wine. Right. Got so it. yeah, you yeah. wrap that back into the cocktail when it's time to present. Right. So like what we were talking about was um, infusing the gin um, and then incorporating it into the caramelized wine. Mm -hmm. So caramelized wine, you would have a bunch of other botanicals in there. But now you get a whole different um, set of flavor components that you can add back into the fortification. So then you have all these different flavor components that you can um, make that final um, martini in. And it just ties everything together beautifully. And it's just a better, more compelling story. Yes, and, and that's what it's about. It's about the story. And in the experience. And like telling people like, man, this is really cool. You know, this is the third generation moonshiner bartender that went out and made his own spirits. Um, and the story is usually what sells people. Yeah. Um, it's and, been a fun story for me to tell. Yeah. And I got to thank my dad and my grandpa, uh, my grandpa Ted, right. uh, for, for, for starting this whole thing years ago. Um, I feel really, really lucky about that. Um, uh, it's just kind of a rare thing to be able to continue to work in your same line of work, but from a, per, from a, pers from a producer's perspective. Sure. Yeah. And I'm sure the bartending aspect played a lot into oh, how time. you produce this final yeah. spirit. Yeah. And to be quite honest with you, it had a lot of, it had a lot to do with the success that we've had. Sure. Um, especially starting in Seattle, um, knowing a lot of, uh, uh, top bartenders in town. Sure. Um, and working for a lot of the larger restaurant groups there, mm -hmm. um, has really helped in, uh, in, in my partners and I building this brand. So. Very cool. Awesome.